nine types of reason. Reason is the mental process of thinking in a logical way to make decisions, solve problems, perform evaluation, and establish and verify facts. Reasoning is essential to critical thinking and has been formalized and studied in the fields of logic, mathematics, and artificial intelligence. While other qualitative forms of reason exist, including intuitive reasoning, verbal reasoning, rhetorical reasoning, and informal reasoning, just to name a few, the following list outlines the major forms of reasoning which should be comprehended as a primer for future discussions in subsequent videos. Before we list the different types of reason, we first need to discuss the ontology of information. Ontology is the study of existence, so when we speak of the ontology of information, we're talking about the state in which information exists. Information exists in one of two states, either empirical or rational. Synonyms for these two states are real versus conceptual, concrete versus abstract, objective versus subjective, practical versus idealistic, operative versus speculative, and symbolically they'll say terrestrial versus celestial, or below or down versus above or top, or grounded and down to earth versus having your head in the clouds. The first form of reasoning we want to discuss is called inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is the first form of reasoning. The word inductive comes from the word induce, which means to bring about, to produce, or to cause the formation of. Inductive reasoning occurs when specific information experienced in the empirical world produces generalized concepts and ideas in the rational world of the mind. To say it another way, inductive reasoning is the mental process of making mental generalizations from specific experiences. Inductive reasoning is called bottom-up logic, and the nature of inductive reasoning is descriptive. An example of inductive reasoning. Premise 1. Kofi is from Africa. Premise 2. Kofi is a black person. Conclusion. All people from Africa are black. In this example, we have used the two specific observations, Kofi is from Africa and Kofi is a black person. Using inductive reasoning, we've come to a generalized conclusion to say that all people from Africa are black. However, in this instance, the general conclusion is not always true because it is possible for people to be from Africa and not be black. Our second example of inductive reasoning, premise one, Earth is a planet in our solar system. Premise two, Earth revolves around the Sun. Therefore, all planets in our solar system revolve around the Sun. In this example of inductive reasoning, we've used the specific observation that Earth is a planet in our solar system and Earth revolves around the Sun to come to the general conclusion that all planets in our solar system revolve around the Sun. In this instance, the conclusion arrived to by way of inductive reasoning is true because all observed planets that we know of in our solar system do revolve around the Sun. The consequence of inductive reasoning may or may not be true and correct. Because of this, an inductive argument is said to be either strong or weak. If the premises of an inductive reasoning are true, it is probable that the conclusion is also true. And in this case, the inductive argument is said to be strong. If the premises of an inductive argument are false or the conclusion is false, then the inductive argument is said to be weak. Racism, sexism, stereotypes, and prejudice are all generalizations based on inductive reasoning. The second form of reasoning we want to discuss is called analogical reasoning. Analogical reasoning is a special category of inductive reasoning. An analogy is a comparison between two things that highlights aspects in which the things are thought to be similar. Thus, analogical reasoning is any type of thinking that relies upon an analogy. Consider the following inductive reasoning argument. Premise 1. All birds have wings. Premise 2. Bats have wings. Conclusion. Bats are birds. While the consequence of the inductive reasoning argument in the preceding example is false, it is based on the similarity between two things. An analogical reasoning argument can be constructed which would be more accurate. An example of analogical reasoning. Premise 1. All birds have wings. Premise 2. Bats have wings. Therefore, bats are like birds in that they both have wings. Analogical reasoning, by way of inductive reasoning, is the form of reasoning that creates metaphors, similes, allegories, parables, mythology, and symbolism. Like inductive reasoning, the consequence of an analogical reasoning argument could be true or false. Since the conclusions from analogical reasoning arguments do not follow with certainty, but rather are only supported with varying degrees of strength.
The third form of reasoning we want to discuss is called abductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning is explanatory reasoning. Abductive reasoning occurs when one seeks to find the simplest and most likely and best explanation for information experience. Abductive reasoning is diagnostic and answers why and how questions. An example of abductive reasoning. Premise 1. Millions of Africans were brought to the Americas through the transatlantic slave trade. Premise 2. There are currently descendants of black Africans in the Americas. Therefore, most of the ancestors of the descendants of black Africans currently in the Americas must have arrived via the transatlantic slave trade. This is an example of abductive reasoning because the conclusion attempts to explain or answer how descendants of black Africans arrived in the Americas. The conclusions of abductive reasoning are considered plausible explanations but are not uniquely the only explanation. Abductive conclusions are expressed as the most likely explanation but also contain a degree of uncertainty and doubt. In our example, another possible explanation is that perhaps the African ancestor arrived in the Americas through some method other than the transatlantic slave trade. Abductive reasoning is also called the duck test. The duck test is given by the expression, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it is probably a duck. As previously stated, it is possible for the conclusion to be false. In the example of the duck test, it is possible that it could be a duck decoy, or a robot designed to look, sound, and move like a duck. Conspiracies which seek to propose alternative explanations for events are results of abductive reasoning. The fourth form of reason we want to discuss is called deductive reasoning. The previous three forms of reasoning that we have discussed all have the ability to yield conclusions that are false or contain a degree of uncertainty. Deductive reasoning is a powerful form of reasoning in that it is through deductive reasoning that we are able to determine truth. Truth is a measure of how well something abstract or rational reflects and represents something concrete or empirical. The word deductive comes from the word deduce which means to show and prove or to break it down. Deductive reasoning is the mental process of deriving specific logical conclusions from ideas and concepts in the mind. Deductive reasoning facilitates the ability to move from mental concepts in the rational world of the mind to experiential information in the empirical real world. Deductive reasoning is called top-down logic and the nature of deductive reasoning is predictive. Deductive reasoning is a motivating and activating form of reason in that it is through deductive reasoning that you know what is true and it is through knowing what is true that you know what works and it is through knowing what works that you know what to do. An example of deductive reasoning. Premise 1. Pataz from Egypt. Premise 2. Egypt is in Africa. Therefore, Pataz from Africa. In deductive reasoning, the conclusion is true if the premises from which it is derived are true. That is, the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. If the conclusion of deductive reasoning is false, then it means that one or more of the premises were false. Deductive reason is sound right reason in that if a deductive argument uses valid logic and true correct and right premises or right knowledge, then it is referred to as sound, otherwise it is unsound. The fifth form of reasoning we want to discuss is called causal reasoning. Causal reasoning is the mental process of determining causality, the relationship between cause and effect. Causal reasoning usually precedes any action because any time you decide to act, you are reasoning about the causal effects of possible actions in the world. Because causal reasoning precedes action, Causal reasoning is not unique to just humans because animals utilize causal information as cues for survival. The words cause and reason in some instances are synonymous. For example, we say to find the cause is to find the reason. Also, certain philosophical schools of thought consider reason the first cause. Reason and cause are also synonymous with purpose, so causal reasoning can be used to find purpose. The first step in causal reasoning is to identify some connectivity, association, relationship, coincident, or correlation between two or more things. It is important to note that correlation does not automatically imply causation. In addition, evidence of some relationship in space and time must be present. For example, causes usually have some proximity to and precede effects. 
cause and effect relationships also require some transfer of force from the cause to the effect. Cause and effect relationships also exist in a responsible and dependent paradigm. That is to say, causes are responsible for effects and effects are dependent upon causes. It is possible for a single cause to have multiple effects or a chain of effects or for multiple causes to converge into a single effect or for a cause and effect to exist in a cycle like a feedback loop. Often it requires deductive, inductive, and abductive reasoning working together in a cycle to perform causal reasoning. Given a cause and effect, we use inductive reasoning to induce a causal relationship rule. Given a rule and effect, we use abductive reasoning to abduce a cause. Given a rule and cause, we use deductive reasoning to deduce an effect. The inductive, abductive, deductive reasoning cycle also occurs in scientific thinking. Scientists experience some evidence and use inductive reasoning to generally conceptualize, abductive reasoning to find an explanatory cause, and deductive reasoning to make specific predictions. Errors in causal reasoning is what leads people to doing acts or performing rituals to solve problems where there is no real causal relationship between the ritual act and the problem attempting to be solved. The sixth form of reasoning we want to discuss is called speculative reasoning. Speculative reasoning, also called theoretical reasoning or pure reason, is rational logical thought primarily concerned with conceptual abstractions. Speculative reason provides the necessary principles of logic, which must apply everywhere, regardless of the specifics of the situation. Speculative reason is contemplative and certain, and can be completely detached and divorced from reality. An example of speculative reasoning. Premise 1. Fairies are magical. Premise 2. Tinkerbell is a fairy. Therefore, Tinkerbell is magical. Speculative reason can be deductive, sound, right reason with correct premises and adhering to the rules of valid logic and still be totally detached from the real world. The seventh form of reasoning we want to discuss is called practical reasoning. Practical reasoning or pragmatic reasoning or operative reasoning is the use of reason to determine how to act. Practical reason is the power of the mind engaged in determining a plan of action and deciding what to do. Practical reason is active, engaged, involved, and dependent upon the particular specifics of the situation. Practical reason is also referred to as moral reason because it involves the thought process which decides behaviors. Unlike speculative reasoning, practical reasoning can be uncertain as a variety of different actions can be performed depending on the circumstances, and the most reasonable course of action is not always chosen to be performed. Also, unlike speculative reasoning, Practical reasoning is attached and connected to the real world. Speculatively, in theory, everything works out and there are few, if any, unknown or unforeseen variables. However, in practice, when you have to take into consideration all of the variability in real life, then the practical outcome may be vastly different from the speculative prediction. The dichotomy between speculative reasoning and practical reasoning is expressed in the idiom, it works in theory but does not work in practice. The challenge to reconcile speculative reasoning versus practical reasoning manifests as people doing things that they know are not good for them or ethical dilemmas in the medical industry such as stem cell research or abortion. The eighth form of reasoning we want to discuss is called backward induction. Backward induction is a form of practical reasoning to determine the best course of action. Backward induction is the process of reasoning backwards in time, starting from the end of a problem or situation to determine a sequence of optimal actions. First, the ultimate goal or outcome is considered. Then, a determination is made on what should be the second to last, third to last, fourth to last, all the way to the first action leading to the desired outcome. During this process, the best action for every possible situation at every point in time should be determined. The process of backward induction is described colloquially as working backwards from the goal and also by the idiom, begin with the end in mind. Backward induction is used in game theory to anticipate the moves of one's opponent in each situation during the course of a game. In the game of chess, backward induction is called retrograde analysis. Because of the many variables that must be considered, 
Backward induction can be simulated using computer programming algorithms and artificial intelligence. Lastly, the ninth form of reason we want to discuss is called statistical reasoning. Statistical reasoning is the way people reason with statistical concepts and make sense of statistical information. Statistical reasoning takes into consideration information and data on probability, chance, and likelihood. Statistical reasoning is the reasoning needed for handling uncertainty and partial truths. Given most of the forms of reasoning that we have discussed contain a degree of uncertainty and doubt, then statistical reasoning gives us the ability to determine and calculate a quantitative value for probability, likelihood, and confidence so that we can objectively determine what is most likely, most probable, and thus most reasonable.